So in this video, we're going to talk about some of those extracellular signaling molecules that can cause a cell to go from the G1 phase into the S phase and therefore through the cell cycle and produce more cells. And many of these signals are defective in cancer cells, so these cells are going through the cell cycle uncontrollably. So for us to learn about how cancer works, we really have to understand the functioning of extracellular signaling. So this is gonna start with us having to talk about receptor proteins. So proteins found on the surface of cells, there are many proteins found on the surface of cells. They are embedded in the plasma membrane, they span the membrane. So a part of the protein might extend into the cytoplasm, another part extends outside the cell into the interstitial fluid. So we generally call these proteins receptor proteins if they bind something outside of the cell. So receptors have ligands. Ligands refer to molecules, some molecule, in many instances proteins, that bind to the receptor. So there's a ligand binding domain of the receptor, and this binding is going to send a signal into the cell and get that cell to do something. And in this case, go through the cell cycle. Um, so what we're talking about here is signaling. Um, cells and telling other cells what to do. And this is probably a good time to review cellular signaling and the different types of cellular signaling. So it's a good, good to review this. And um, these are four, there are more, types of cell signaling, endocrine, paracrine, autocrine, and juxta, juxta, I spelled that wrong, juxtacrine, sorry about that, juxtacrine. Um, signaling, these different types of signaling refer to the source of the signaling molecule or the ligand. So can you remember the sources of molecules in all these different types of signaling? You could pause here and think about it and come back and I'll explain it to you. Endocrine signaling um, involves usually molecules that we call hormones, but endocrine signaling typically refers to distance signaling. So a hormone might be located in one, uh, a gland might be located in one part of the body, release its signaling molecule, the hormone, into the bloodstream, and that hormone is going to travel all through the body and uh, access uh, receptors that might be on distant cells. So endocrine signaling typically uh, refers to distant signaling. It could be local, but it could be distant, uh, but it involves uh, hormones that enter the bloodstream and they can travel all through the body. So a gland telling cells what to do somewhere far away, communicating through the bloodstream. Paracrine signaling, which is what we talk about a lot when we talk about cancer biology, uh, is local signaling. So paracrine might involve a local cell, let's say in a tissue or an organ. Uh, cells in that tissue release signaling molecules, which we'll learn about and those molecules will bind to receptors on local cells. So paracrine signaling typically happens within tissues or organs, and it's one group of cells telling another cells what to do, again, releasing uh, molecules, signaling molecules that are binding receptors on the surface of cells in that area. Autocrine signaling, well, cells can release their own signaling molecules. So cells can tell themselves what to do, by releasing these molecules and having those molecules come back and bind to receptors on their surface. So autocrine signaling, the source and the target are the same cell, cells telling themselves what to do. Uh, the last one, juxtacrine, I spelled that wrong, um, actually involves, instead of soluble, typically in uh, endocrine, paracrine, or autocrine, cells are releasing molecules into the fluid outside of cells. In juxtacrine, cells are touching each other. So protein-protein interactions that are through proteins that are embedded in the plasma membranes of both cells. So cells are communicating with each other by protein-protein interactions by cell surface proteins. That is juxtacrine signaling. And that typically requires close contact between two cells. So these are just a review of the different types of signaling. There are more types of signaling in the body. Um, but when we talk about cancer biology, we talk a lot about paracrine and autocrine signaling. Um, now, 
all sorts of molecules can be signaling molecules, hormones, neurotransmitters. In cancer biology, we talk a lot about the signaling molecules called growth factors, because growth factors are what tend to trigger cells to go through the cell cycle and make more cells, as we covered in the last video. So we're going to talk about growth factors and the proteins that they bind on the surface of cells called growth factor receptors. And so we're going to spend a lot of time taught learning growth factors and growth factor receptors, and we're going to see that they're defective in many human cancer cells, which allow human cancer cells to grow and grow uncontrollably. So we need to review and learn, well, first learn and then review uh, growth factors and growth factor receptors. So um, hopefully you've got this concept of signaling, one cell telling another cell what to do via soluble molecules, signaling. So here I've got two cells. Um, and one cell has a growth factor receptor, which I abbreviate as GFR, and another cell releases the growth factor. So one cell is the source of the signal, and one cell receives the signal. So when a cell releases a growth factor, it will bind to a growth factor receptor, and that binding will trigger, typically, that cell to get a signal to go through the cell cycle, as we covered in the previous video. So that's pretty simple, right? that's the, and that's a very general um, function of growth factors and growth factor receptors. So um, this is generally how it works. Some cell is the source of the growth factor. It binds a growth factor receptor, which is the target cell, and the target cell will go through the cell cycle and make more cells. And so now we should learn about some growth factors and some growth factor receptors. Let's not talk theoretical, let's talk actual. So there are many growth factors and many growth factor receptors. Uh, if you just learn a couple, then you get the idea and then you can understand all of them. So we're going to introduce some growth factors and growth factor receptors. The first growth factor we're going to talk about is a growth factor called PDGF, platelet-derived growth factor. So this is a protein. Um, it is found, so there must be some source of it. Some cell must make PDGF. Can you guess what um, the source of PDGF is? So when the scientists characterized it, they derived it from platelets and found it caused cells to go through the cell cycle, growth factor. So platelet-derived growth factor is found, in fact, in platelets. Right? Uh, and you hopefully know what platelets are. Platelets play a role in blood clotting but they also can trigger cell growth and division. Let's see how. So the source of PDGF, one source, the main source, platelets. Well, that means mean if this is a growth factor, there must be growth factor receptors on some cells. So I've drawn here some blood vessel, right? Uh, and you can see the lumen of the blood vessel, and I have drawn some cells that line blood vessels, which hopefully you remember are endothelial cells. And I've also drawn some cells in the connective tissue, fibroblasts. And if you look on the surface of the cells, I have drawn receptors called PDGFR. So those are PDGF receptors. So we have growth factor, which is um, PDGF, and then we have the growth factor receptor, with this, which is PDGFR. So, but right now, the receptor is not binding growth factor because the growth factor is inside the platelet. So these cells are just hanging out in G1. Well, why do we need more cells? Maybe we need more cells because there's been tissue damage. There's been a cut. We've got some blood loss, right? We've got some damage. So what do platelets do? They're involved in clotting, but this is not about clotting. This is about uh, cell growth and division. So the platelets are going to activate, and we're not going to go into platelet activation or clotting uh, because we're talking about growth factors here. But when platelets activate, one of their functions is that they release PDGF. And when PDGF is released, it's going to bind PDGF receptors. And when it binds the receptors, these cells get a signal, so extracellular signaling, signal goes into the cell, and these cells that were just sitting in G1 are now going to go through S phase, G2, M, and make more cells. 
So we just saw the um, function of PDGF, which is to bind PDGF receptors, which are found on cells such as endothelial cells and fibroblasts. And when the growth factor binds the growth factor receptor, causes the cells to enter the cell cycle, produce more cells. So there we go. We've learned a growth factor, and we've learned a growth factor receptor. Great. Things are more complicated than that, but that's the simple version. We'll get more complicated later. All right, let's learn another set of growth factors and growth factor receptors. Another growth factor, which is talked about a lot in cancer biology, is EGF, the epidermal growth factor. So can you guess what EGF binds? It binds the EGF receptor. Very good. So uh, again, we have cells that make the growth factor, and we have cells that have the receptor. Could be different cells and local signaling, that'd be paracrine, could be the same cell and could be autocrine. But for now, let's just talk about growth factor and growth factor receptor. So most epithelial cells in the body have EGF receptor uh, on it or some version of that. And we'll learn later, there are different versions of these receptors, but we'll get to that later. Right now, EGF receptor, most epithelial cells have the EGF receptor on their surface or some version of that. Now, um, the source of the growth factor could be many different types of cells. It could be that own cell, so it could be autocrine signaling, could be a local cell. Uh, and again, it doesn't matter at this point. Um, you could always you know, investigate the sources of the growth factors. Not important at this point, just to understand signaling at this point. Growth factor comes out of cells, right? When we need more cells, and so if we need more epithelial cells, and we constantly do because they get turned over a lot because they lined our ducts, um, skin, for example, digestive tract, reproductive tract. Um, so when we need more of these epithelial cells, EGF will be released from some cells and they will bind EGFR and that will send a signal into the cell. So that is extracellular signaling goes into the cell and now we make more cells. Um, would PDGF bind the EGF receptor, right? So we just learned uh, last slide, PDGF, that's a growth factor. And then we learned EGF, that's a growth factor. Are they interchangeable? No, they are not interchangeable. The receptors um, have a three-dimensional structure that bind very specific ligands. And so receptors are ligand specific. They will not bind any growth factor they will only bind the growth factors that fit into their ligand binding domain. So PDGF binds the PDGF receptor, EGF binds the EGF receptor, but they do not bind each other, right? So growth factors stick with their own growth factor receptors. All right, let's learn another. So we've learned two growth factors and two of their corresponding receptors. Uh, let's learn a third. FGF, fibroblast growth factor. So you could probably guess the pattern at this point, what the receptor is going to be called. Yes, it is the FGF receptor. And so again, the growth factor comes out of some cells and it binds to the receptor on either the same cells or other cells, depending if it's paracrine or autocrine. So here I've drawn that the FGF receptor is present on fibroblasts. Not surprising because it is a fibroblast growth factor. This must help fibroblasts to grow, so that name does match. But the names in biology, they don't always make sense because scientists discover one thing and then they give it a name and then it turns out, well, actually it does other things, but the name sticks. So fibroblast growth factor will bind the FGFR, the receptor, but the receptor is not just found on fibroblasts, it's found on other cells as well, such as endothelial cells. So don't let the name um, trip you up. Um, names are given to proteins and then things change and names stick. So um, fibroblast growth factor receptor can be found on more than just fibroblasts. Um, we did see in the last slide or the slide before that there's this PDGF receptor didn't we see that on endothelial cells? We did. So cells can have more than one type of growth factor receptor on their surface. So 
now this cell, endothelial cells, for example, can pick up signals from different growth factors. In this instance here, we have a cell releasing FGF, fibroblastic growth factor. FGF is going to bind FGF receptors, right? F FGF doesn't bind PDGF receptor. FGF binds the FGF receptor, sends a signal to that cell, says we need more cells, time to go nest phase. So again, growth factor, binding growth factor receptor, they have to match, the ligand binds the ligand binding domain, and it's specific for the receptor. Now that we've covered some growth factors and some growth factor receptors, you can learn lots of different growth factors and growth factor receptors. We don't have to learn all of them here. There are many growth factors that bind corresponding growth factor receptors. And so if you've learned one, you can learn all of them. Um, and we don't have to cover all of them because they more work more or less the same. I'll give you a few more examples. A vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF. It is a growth factor, and it will target, not surprisingly, the VEGF receptor. Now, where's this receptor going to be found? It's going to be found on endothelial cells. So endothelial cells can have many different types of growth factor receptors on the surface and can respond to many different types of growth factors. VEGF plays a very important role in blood vessel growth, um, something known as angiogenesis. So... VEGF binds VEGFR and can get uh, endothelial cells to go through the cell cycle and help trigger blood vessel growth. Um, there are many growth factors that bind many growth factor receptors, and we don't have to learn all of them because they work more or less the same. Um, IGF binds the IGF receptor. Now, sometimes names are a little different. The, the convention that we've been seeing is that, oh, every growth factor must end in GF, and any every growth factor receptor must end in GFR. And it turns out that's actually not the case because things get named by scientists and sometimes the names aren't consistent. So there's a growth factor called HGF, which binds a protein commonly known as MET. So you would think it would be known as HGFR, but it binds a protein called MET, which you could call HGFR, but MET is the more common name. But it, all it is is a growth factor receptor. SCF, which again, doesn't sound like a growth factor because it doesn't have GF in it. Actually, it is. It's a growth factor. And it binds a protein called KIT, which again, well, that's kind of a weird name because I thought every growth factor receptor uh, had sort of a consistent naming convention. And the answer is no, it doesn't. And that's okay. I'm not telling you this to confuse you. I'm telling you this to make you aware that in the literature, Sometimes things don't always um, line up in that respect. All growth factors and all growth factor receptors don't necessarily always have the same naming convention. So you might see some different names, but if you know, well, something is a growth factor and something is growth factor receptor, this is how that they are triggering cell signaling. So hopefully in this video, you can now appreciate uh, how cells are signaled to go through the cell cycle. Many cells have growth factor receptors on their surface, and when they bind their corresponding growth factor, that will send a signal into the cell to get the cell to go through the cell cycle. In later videos, we will talk about the uh, growth factor receptor. We will learn a lot more detail about the receptor itself. And then in later videos, we will talk about how the receptor signals into the cell to trigger cell division.